up. It's your boy, the Cosmos. I can't do it too loud because it's late right now. You know what I mean? So, I haven't did one of these videos in a minute because I've just been so focused on my exercising and my workouts and I've just been just been um, putting out videos with that. You know what I mean? I haven't been putting out these spiritual consciousness videos. So, I'm going to do one tonight. All right? And this one's going to be called When Stillness Speaks by Eckhart Tolle. So I'm going to be reading a book, just a few, a little few, little sentences, it's not going to be a lot. But what I am going to do is I'm going to break down the precepts so that we can get a deeper sense of what this is talking about. Now, I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. You guys may get something differently from when I read it, and that's okay. You know what I mean? Like, what I want to do, my whole point and intent from this video is to encourage the, you know, the mind of people, to build the mind of people, to inspire the mind of people, right? So, like, I want to share this information so that we can grow. This is not just for me. I want y'all to grow as well, too. Not to say that y'all ain't grown. In fact, you might be more grown than me. You might be more spiritual, enlightened than me. And I can learn from you. And I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? But what I want to do is tantalize that spiritual essence, the soul essence of consciousness of people because we need to grow not just individually but together right so this video is going to be titled stillness speaks which is the name of the book stillness speaks by Eckhart Tolle when you lose touch with your inner stillness you lose touch with yourself when you lose touch with yourself you lose yourself in the world. Your inner sense, your innermost sense of self, of who you are, is inseparable from stillness. This is the I am that is deeper than the name and the form. Stillness is your essential nature. What is stillness? The inner space of awareness in which the words on this page are being perceived and become thoughts. Without that awareness, the word, without that awareness, there would be no perception, no thoughts, no world. You are that awareness disguised as a person. That's beautiful. I'm going to read that again. When you lose touch with your inner stillness, you lose touch with yourself. When you lose touch with yourself, you lose yourself in the world. Your innermost sense of self, of who you are, is inseparable from stillness. This is the I am that is deeper than the name and the form. Stillness is your essential nature. What is stillness? The inner space of awareness into which the words on this page are being perceived and become thoughts. Without that awareness, there would be no perception, no thoughts, no world. You are that awareness disguised as a person. That is very deep. It's very beautiful. So let's break that down. Okay. When you lose touch with your inner stillness, you lose touch with yourself. What is inner stillness? A lot of people may have not have heard that terminology before, inner stillness. So, the inner stillness is what you would call the awareness or God, whether it be Allah, whether it be Yahweh, whether it be Adonai, whether it be Jehovah, whether it be Krishna, whether it be Brahma, whether it be the At. Man, because God is everything. God created everything. God is everywhere, right? So anything that exists comes from the consciousness of God. God cannot be in heaven. The heavens would have to be in God. Because if God was in heaven, then that would mean that God is not everything. God is not the ultimate because how could the ultimate be in anything? 
everything will have to be in the ultimate. God is our knowing, God is our seeing. So nothing could exist within it. It would have to be in that essence of God. So when it says, when you lose touch with the inner stillness, you lose touch with yourself. Who you are is not your name, is not your form. The inner stillness, which is the spirit and the soul that lies dormant within this vehicle vessel of so-called body, is the one that's driving this vehicle, is the one that's operating this vehicle, and is the one that is learning from awareness from this so-called experiment that this vehicle is operating in, into what we call life. So as we go and as we operate in actuality, we are teaching the creator that lies dormant within us. That's what it means by when you lose touch with inner stillness, you lose touch with yourself because that's who you are. You are not your name. You are not Elizabeth. You are not Rebecca. You are not Dwayne. You are not Matthew. Your name is only given to you so that this so-called entity can have a format or a formality of what they call existence in life. But you are not your name. You are not your form. You are not your body. You are not your emotions. You are God having a human experience. Now that may go a lot. Of, that may go over a lot of people's head. So let's keep going. When you lose touch with the inner stillness, you lose touch with yourself, who you truly are. When you lose touch with yourself, you lose yourself in the world. And that is why we came into this world, so that we can be tested, so that we can learn. Because this world is a learning apparatus, it's a learning experience. So when you lose yourself, you lose yourself in this world. When you lose touch with yourself, you are lost within this world. Right? Because this world is what you would call a learning place or the illusion of maya. Maya means illusion in the ancient um, Hindu scriptures. Right? Because what is real is not anything that you can touch or feel. These senses are only made real so that you can have a sense of experience in this so-called life. Right? Because if you didn't feel, if you didn't have any senses, then the whole experience wouldn't formulate together with each other. So it has to be a sense of reality so that you can have that pain, so that you can have that, that feeling, that emotion, so that you can gravitate from this experience. And this is the difference from the physical and the spirit and why the spirit needs the physical and why the physical is just a shell for the spirit. Right, because when you have these spirits that exist all around us, for one, we are spirit, right? But there's a lot of spirits who are using the physical form because they are not able to manifest in this reality. So you, what you would call demon possession, right, in a lot of instances, is spirits trying to have an inkling of a human existence or an inkling of an existence by harboring or taking a vessel so that it can experience what the physicality is about. Whether it be the incubus or the succubus. Going into how spirits take possessions of human bodies. So, understanding that this reality is only perceived to be real so that the spirit can have that learning apparatus so that it can grow so that consciousness can grow or awareness can grow or God can grow because the temple of God is not made with what? The temple of God is not made with hands. The vehicle, the body is the temple of God that is not made with hands so that God can have a vehicle to experience and operate in self. That's a part of the illusion. So 
a lot of the times these spirits are taking possessions or wanting an, ex- wanting an experience because they can't have it, aka what you would call life and experiencing it on its third dimension, right? Because you can read all about construction and then try to apply it. But it's different when you actually are implying the construction, whether it be carpentry, whether it be masonry, whether it be plumbing, and actually doing the physical work and getting the physical experience. That's the difference from spirit and so-called spirit in the flesh. A lot of these entities don't have that physicality of of spirit and flesh to now re, uh, to now to now stay claim to this reality, to experience this reality. So therefore, to a lot of people who are lost in reality, or who a lot, or a lot of people who give up themselves in this so-called religion, give up themselves in a so-called illusionary state, because as it says here. When you lose touch with the inner stillness, you lose touch with yourself. When you lose touch with yourself, you lose you lose yourself in the world. So a lot of people are losing themselves in the world because they don't know who they are. They don't know where they're from. And in that fact, you give up yourself to other entities who are trying to experience this so-called life. So they harbor your physicality, trying to get that experience. And in turn, you become mentally ill. You become possessed by a so-called demon. That's another that's another avenue of it. Now we're going into the innermost sense of self of who you are is the inseparable is inseparable from stillness. So the innermost self of who you are is inseparable from stillness because who you are is not the name of what you are. The name doesn't describe the function of the entity. The name doesn't describe you. It's just a title. You cannot be described. What you are in actuality, how you exist on this plane, words can't express that. So you cannot be described in forms, physicality, through title, definition. The innermost self of who you are is inseparable from stillness. Who you are is inseparable from the God that lies within you. You are not your name. You are God having a human experience. The illusion of separation only exists so that you can have a so-called individual experience. But that individual experience is illusion. Why? Because one is all and all is one. We are all connected. Whether we like each other, hate each other, love each other, whatever. All is one and one is all. So as you look at your experience as individual, just understand that. There's a universal soul consciousness into where all souls come from. There's a universal consciousness into where all spirits come from. There's only one soul. There's only one spirit. There's only one consciousness. There's only one God. And all those essences into what you call God manifest from one thing, whether it be the source whether it be consciousness, whether it be the emanations of Allah, Krishna, Atman, Brahma, Shiva, Jehovah, whatever you want to call it, all manifestations spring from that source. And that source is in our manifestations. That's the illusion of self. That's the illusion of Maya. Now, stillness is your essential nature. God is your essential nature. Christians, Muslims, God is your essential nature because that is where we all come from. You cannot exist without God. 
You cannot exist without that spark of spirit and soul that God gave within you to exist within this world. And guess what? God created all the worlds. And I said plural S. You don't believe me? Let me pull that up. Let me pull that up right now. Let's go to... Let's go to Hebrews. Let me find it first. Okay. Hebrews 11 and 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds, plural S, were formed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. When you look up that word worlds, it comes from a Greek word which means cosmos. So God created the cosmos, created worlds. That means multiple, more than one world. There's there's not just earth. According to the Bible, there's worlds. And in the Bible, they have a star system called Pleiades, Sirius. Yeah, so there's more than one planet. There's more than one world. And if there's more than one world, then there's more than one existence of people that exist on those worlds. Because why would God make a world vacate with nothing that exists on it? So as I just read, in faith, the worlds were created through the word. So, as I read here, stillness is your essential nature. What is stillness? The inner space of awareness, awareness, which in the words on this page are being perceived become from thoughts. Without that awareness, there would be no perception, no thoughts, no world. If you don't have that consciousness of soul and spirit, if you don't, if you just have a battery with no energy, what's the use of the battery? If you just have a vehicle with no spirit and soul, what's the use of that body? If you have a vehicle that is vacant, that is has no essence of spirit and soul you would be obsolete of existence. That spirit and soul is the main essence of that vehicle. So I'm going to read again. Stillness is your essential nature. God is your essential nature. What is stillness? The inner space of awareness. What is stillness? The inner space of God. The inner space of awareness. The inner space represents how that God consciousness comes into that inner space and now makes it void of space. There is no space. Space is an illusion. Space is being occupied by energy, dark matter. What is the main essential color? The first color into where all colors come from? Okay, let's read. Do I have to, I guess I gotta go into the Bible because that's what a lot of people understand. Let me go into the Bible. Okay. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness. What is darkness? Black. What is black? I'm not black. I'm brown. But what is black? Black is the essential color into where all light spectrum frequencies come from. Blue red, purple, gray, all of those colors come from darkness. Darkness is matter. Darkness is space. And guess what? Space is filled with matter, whether it be antimatter or matter. The illusion of space doesn't exist. Space is occupied by awareness. By the God consciousness of stillness. 
And the more we understand that, the more we can identify with who and what we truly are. Because living in this world, we have so many distractions. The distractions of emotions, the distractions of feelings, the distractions of pleasure, pain, the distractions of success and failure, right? The distractions of the ego, the distractions of the me, of the I, and the separatism of the I gotta get, and this is all mine, and I gotta make this, and Understanding that everything that you do, everything that you make, everything that you accumulate cannot be bring with you. You can't bring that in shit to the grave. So it's like you making all your money, your whole empire, just to pass it on to somebody else. When you really think about it, you're going to get a bigger house, you're going to get more shoes, you're going to get more cars, you're going to accumulate more so-called wealth just to do what? What's going to happen to it after you die? You're going to pass it on to somebody else. You're going to pass it on to these ungrateful children who don't know what you know to build that empire that you built. And guess what they're going to do with it? They're going to splinter it. They're going to to enjoy your riches while you pass. Live your life. Live this. And they're going to splinter it. And that's the illusion of Maya. But what, what can you bring with you after you die? And that's what... A lot, a lot of the ancient Egyptians focused on. They focused on the afterlife and the accumulation of knowledge, of stillness, of awareness, of God body consciousness that they can bring on with them through, through the transition. Because as you go on to this experience of stillness, the experience of life, aka awareness, there's only one thing that you can bring with you. And that is information. This is why we come here to learn. To get that information base. So that our spirit can feel comfortable. So that our spirit can breathe and live. Think about how you feel when you have that lack of information. Think about how you hold a lot of these people with these huge careers. And I'm not going to say no names. Because I don't want to get my shit flagged. But just think about how you feel when you go to these people who have these major careers, who major in these special schools, and you don't have the knowledge that they have. Think about how you're under them, and how you listen, how you're willing to listen to their every word, because what what they have, the information they have, can save your life. Or because you don't know the information that they have, it can ruin your life. But because they have information that you don't have, you listen to them. So now you're indebted to somebody that you don't know, but they know something that you don't know. So you're indebted your whole life to them. The lack of information could be the death of you. And this is why I consume my life with information. Because you are only as good as your information. You can only step forward or make moves as make move as as good as or as much as the information you have. And this is why in this world do they deprive of a certain ethnic group of people of information. Right? Because understand this, right? When you ask somebody what racism is, they tell you it's, you know, people hating on you for the color of your skin or people, you know, being disrespectful to you or don't like you because you're this color. It's not true. That's not what racism is. Okay? Racism is a systematic approach to get all of the resources and control all all of the resources at a systematic level to deprive a certain specific ethnic group of people of the so-called resources, of the so-called opportunities. That's what racism is. So melanated people, black people can never be racist. Why? Because we don't own and control the resources. We don't own the institutions. We don't own our own resources that are in our own lands. 
We don't own the institutions. We don't own the corporations. We don't own. We don't own the whole called corporate sector, the politics. We don't own that. So we can never be racist because we are not depriving a certain ethnic group of people a so-called rise and chance and opportunities and equal liberties of life. The ones who own the situations, the institutions, the corporations, because remember, racism is a systematic approach to suppress a certain ethnic group of those opportunities. So understanding what the true ethics are, understanding what the true major role that is happening in society is depriving certain people of other situations and benefits of the same privileges that everybody would naturally have on this so-called God-given land. So, understanding when stillness speaks it speaks louder than words when body language speaks it speaks louder than words words are very powerful but they can only get you so far this is why they say actions are bigger than words I'll end it off by saying this Anything real cannot be changed. Anything unreal doesn't exist. Here and now lies the truth in God.